So today, AMD launched the first of its Zen 4 X3D lineup, the R9 7950X3D. And yeah, gamers have bought it up already, as far as I can tell, and that's because it does win. And there is just a group of people that always buy the best, and AMD is firmly the best now, winning most of the time and on average over Intel's i9 brothers that typically consume over double the energy of the AMD flagship to the point that AMD's new flagship even consumes less energy than Intel's i5. And even more embarrassing for Intel is the fact that AMD's flagship doesn't require a $250 DDR5 kit to still, well, to still lose. But to be fair, it's not all smooth sailing for AMD's new release. Intel's i9-13900KS does win sometimes, and it's in more than just a couple of games. Although I do have to say that it's rarely by much when Intel does win, and it actually seems like a lot of the time that the i9-13900K or the 13900KS wins, it's in a game that's using an old engine and really doesn't need the extra performance. I mean, seriously, look at this example here. Who cares if you get 860 frames per second instead of 840 frames per second? And I do think this is an important thing to emphasize here, because when AMD does win, more frequently compared to Intel, it is in a scenario in a recent release where it matters that they actually got some extra performance than otherwise. And furthermore, even in the handful of games where you could use extra performance and it is a recent release where Intel is close, whether that means slightly winning, slightly losing, or basically tying the AMD equivalent, these all seem like titles to me where there is just some sort of engine bottleneck. So it's hard to say if some of the potential of the X3D cache, or even the i9s, honestly, is being wasted here if the engine was better optimized to feed the CPU with like an extra fast SSD or, or something. I mean, for example, look at the Rift Breaker. These are all wildly different core counts, core types, clock speeds, and cache levels, yet the top chips all basically hit around 225 frames per second on average and around 160 fps minimums i don't know it just seems to me like today while we can look at some insane examples of vcash's potential in a few games it's all just potential in specific scenarios and a lot of these latest games just aren't scaling past certain points whether you're running at six gigahertz or throwing hundreds of megabytes of cash at the problem okay it's starting to sound like i'm rambling a little bit all over the place here what have i been trying to say in the past couple minutes well, what I've been trying to say is that when you look at AMD taking the gaming crown with averages that usually aren't huge, you have to remember that a lot of the wins on AMD's side are in games that are finally getting over like 144 frames per second now, or helping in a recent release where you can take any extra FPS you can get because it's just not scaling to high frame rates very effectively and most of the time intel has big wins are in games well over 200 frames per second or even 400 or 800 frames per second where it really doesn't matter that you have the extra performance and while we can't be sure if some of the recent releases where amd and intel are close like rift breaker or spider-man are because of something in the engine bottlenecking the frame rates I can't find any examples like this on the Intel side that suggest if you really program for extra cash or for something special in Intel that you will get extra performance. And so overall, I think it seems like AMD's wins are more important for suggesting that it will age better in the future. And there's more evidence out there that it's the game engines or programming holding AMD back right now more so than Intel most likely. Although speaking of programming effectively, I wouldn't say there's some big fumble here with Zen 4 X3D scheduling at launch. It's not like Alder Lake, where at launch, Intel couldn't even play some games due to DRM having issues with the e-cores. And, and I liked Alder Lake. I advised people a couple years ago to get Alder Lake over Zen 3, saying, I don't think the e-core issue is that prevalent and it's only going to get better. It's... 
a less of an issue with Zen 4, but it is still an issue, an issue that current buyers need to be aware of and future buyers considering either the 7800X3D or the 7950X3D should be aware of because if they get the 7800X3D, you're just not going to have to worry about that ever happening. But also it makes it pretty clear that AMD will be able to claw back some more performance over the next few months, optimizing the scheduling of these new hybrid core products and so just remember that by the way just like alder lake zen 4 it's already winning right now that average is only going to improve over the coming months and only going to improve well it's already not requiring expensive ram compared to intel to get the best performance and we're using half the energy or less and so just yeah i want to emphasize this final point here about expensive ram and tons of energy consumption on the intel side I've been very outspoken about this, how silly Intel looks to me juicing its top chips. It just feels like Intel's i9s are this guy who's destroyed his body doing steroids to still only manage to obtain second place. Intel's juicing everything, power, expensive DDR5, and they're still losing. And that does look pathetic to me. Uh, but I want to be clear, just because I think that looks pathetic, just because I think that i9 was and still is a silly product to buy given the sacrifices, that doesn't mean that I think you should buy the 7950X3D. And actually, I have a lot to say about that and another CPU launching soon that is a huge elephant in the room. In addition to some fundamental questions I have about how AMD's running their X3D lineup and strategy in general. And so, yeah, I'm going to talk about the lineup itself, upcoming chips, and really which products coming out in the next couple of months and right now that you should probably just ignore for the entire year. Here, but first, an ad from a sponsor. Jessie here loves bones, but it wouldn't be healthy for her to constantly eat them as much as she would love that. The same is usually true for reasonably priced instant meals. It can feel like you're stuck whenever you're looking for something that's quick to cook, tasty, healthy, and cheap all at the same time. Well, unless you just choose Vite Ramen, this piece of content is sponsored by Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a delicious American-crafted source of protein and nutrients that takes minutes to make without sacrificing taste. This includes their classic packages that make it easy to add protein and other ingredients of your choice while it cooks, and also their Ramen Go packages that offer a healthy, microwavable option for those who truly only have 15 minutes free for lunch, whether you're working from the office or you're working at home. With Fight Ramen, you'll never be too busy to eat healthy either way. So click the link in the description and use the offer code BROKENSILICON to save 10% off on a variety of different products, including special bundles for Moore's Law is Dead fans, raw nudes if you want to make up your own recipes, Fight Go packages and other food products and cooking utensils and more. Whatever you'd prefer, using the offer code BROKENSILICON and even just clicking the link in the description really helps Moore's Law is Dead tremendously and it helps you save money on a tasty, quick-to-make lunch meal. Try Vite Ramen today. Last year, in my 13900K analysis video, I concluded that while I like the mid-range and lower-end offerings in the Raptor Lake lineup, the i9-13900K, although it kind of took the gaming crown by a few percentage points, that that just really came at the expense of everything else, to the point that the everything else made the one modest win it got look silly as something to choose over AMD's Zen 4 flagship. You know, but if I were to condense my opinion down into something more pointed and less colorful, I would just say that I thought, the thing really didn't make sense, Intel's flagship, when you compare it to all of the other options, if you're being honest about what you're actually going to use it for. I actually have a similar conclusion today on the 7950X3D with just like different supporting arguments, right? So if you're a pure gamer, the 7800X3D is about to launch and early testing suggests that just like with the 7700X versus the 7950X last year, this thing is going to easily hit top performance levels, probably beat the 7950X3D overall, and it's going to hold the crown for years to come with Intel unlikely to challenge it anytime soon while costing significantly less than both the i9, but also the 7950X3D. And so it just seems like all the benefits of the 7950X3D that you're actually probably, if you're being honest with yourself, buying it for better efficiency and better gaming performance double applied to the 7800X3D that is cheaper 
And if you actually want more multi-threading performance, look guys, this isn't like, you know, like seven years ago or something where you have to decide between an i7-7700K and a Broadwell E HEDT chip. Everything on the market can do some multi-threading well and probably games really well. You're not sacrificing a ton here. You're probably maxing out most games and running into engine bottlenecks as I've already covered. So if that's the case and you want multi-threading, there are so many deals going on right now for the non X3D uh, AMD chips that I just don't see why you wouldn't go, yeah, I'm going to save 30% on money and just have a higher clocking 16 cores because there's no way that 7950X is going to hold back any of my games realistically anyways. And you know, saying this all out loud, you know, outlining why I think anyone who wants gaming probably should just get the 7800X 3D and anyone who's interested in multi-threading should just get the heavily discounted non-VCache 16 core Zen 4 variant. I can't help but feel that it was an odd choice for AMD to launch the 7950X 3D before the 7800X 3D, or really to launch it at all. Looking at today's results, I think we can all understand why AMD only bothered to launch one 8-core Vcache variant of Zen 3, and I think there's a real argument that that's what they should have done again this time, unfortunately. I mean, you don't have any scheduling issues to worry about, and they could have just used the best 8-core yields, clocked it a little higher than what it looks like they're going to with the 7800X 3D, and then be done with it and not have to worry about scheduling or anything, and they would have taken the gaming crown, and they could have just worried about their 12 and 16 core models being priced reasonably compared to in, uh, Intel. And at the very least, though, even if they thought they needed a 16 core flagship that had Vcash on it, I think it's obvious the 7800X3D should have launched first so they could have more time to fix the scheduling issues with their new 16 core. They should have put their best foot forward and then launched the flagship later after the 7800X3D got glowing reviews. And I don't know. I guess let's get to that then. When it comes to waiting for the 7800X3D, I think we should remember that waiting another couple months is probably not a bad idea when you consider that memory and motherboard prices are probably going to con keep going down. When I talk to retailers, everyone expects prices on most products to keep going down over the coming months. And so if you wait a month or two for the 7800X3D, then you're also waiting to get it with probably cheaper motherboards and RAM as well. But it's funny. Once you take into consideration all of these other factors in price performance that make the 7800X3D look like a better option to me compared to the 7950X3D, I just go, yeah, but doesn't the 7800X3D also look like overkill for the overwhelming majority of gamers anyways? When you look at the low-end Raptor Lake in Zen 4 options that in like 99% of games are going to give you the same frame rate... I just can't help but feel like a lot of the flagship gaming CPUs we're talking about now just aren't really worth the money for most people in general. And, well, you know, that brings me to my conclusion. In conclusion, with the 7950X3D that launched today, it is no longer disputed. AMD now has the gaming crown. And importantly, their average is built out of wins from games that actually needed the extra performance more often than Intel's wins, where they're typically from older engines that are just scaling better with high clock speeds and RAM speeds. And so AMD's win is a more important win, and it's still a win on on average, but the 7800X3D is coming soon, and it's going to be the far more recommended option by me if you really, and this is specific here, you really just want the best enthusiast gaming system before summer. Because in any other scenario, if you actually want better multi-threading performance, I don't really point to the 7950X3D or the i9-13900K. I point to Zen 4 16, 12, and 8 core chips that are on fire sale right now. And if you needed that multi threading performance, well, that's probably what you're buying it for, anyways. And, and if you're willing to make a few more sacrifices, there are some insane deals on the cheaper Zen 4 stuff. And even some of the mid range Raptor Lake stuff that I think makes looking at this other, these other flagship chips that are going to overall cost you like twice or three times as much, just a silly decision. And so ultimately, I'm only recommending the 7800X3D for extreme enthusiast gamers who want the best. I'm recommending the 7950X with its insane deals for people who want a reasonable to cool, reasonable RAM requirement flagship 
multi-threading chip, and I'm recommending far, far, far cheaper stuff for most gamers that are already overkill for most scenarios. And actually, that's just gonna about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please double check that you're subscribed. It seems like most of you haven't been in the past month. Make sure you ring the bell button so you don't miss the upcoming content from the channel as well. And if you have the extra money, consider supporting us on Patreon. There are exclusive podcasts coming out every week that are ad-free. You can ask me and guest questions, and you can get access to a Discord to discuss this video video with me in the community as well. But to everybody else, just thank you for watching. <laughs>